to an extent, what's happening right now is shaping our thinking about what is the coming next. Um, so I would focus on, on our future gazing beyond COVID-19. So we can see that there are already some big issues that are coming out. Uh, for example, the fact that families and people living with dementia are not seeking diagnosis, they're not trying to confirm a diagnosis is a big issue uh, on two counts. One, people are not receiving the support that they need in the post-diagnostic um, um, period. And that means that, you know, in six months' time, we will have a crisis on our hands, as many, many families don't actually know um, uh, what has hit them, and they have no a way to uh, access the information, or everybody will want to access information at the same time, and it will be a glut. Um, currently, there is obviously an interruption of social care. Uh, so what's going to happen? Is this social care never going to be available? Is it going to be available down the line? Uh, we do know that measures of um, self-distancing have had a terrible effect on the mental well-being of people living with dementia, especially if they're living alone. If they are in later stages at the moment, people are um, having all kinds of other issues. And we've got a report of people wandering in the streets uh, and being fined. Uh, a couple of countries have had to intervene with their governments uh, in order to stop the government from fining people wandering. I'm thinking of Taiwan, for example. Um, uh, there's a, the, the Venetian reported, for example, on um, the wearing of masks and how this is creating further confusion in people. So. We need to understand what the social distancing will have meant uh, a few months down the line for the well-being of, of uh, people living with dementia and of the families. Um, there are issues about prevalence and incidence. We had a webinar a couple of weeks ago where uh, this was uh, brought forward. So if our constituency really overlaps with the constituency of COVID-19, and we have heard you know, the United Kingdom talking about 18% of people in the UK uh, that have died of COVID-19 seems to have had dementia. So what is going to be the impact on our constituencies, the prevalence and incidence figures, for example, going to diminish? And what does it mean for uh, social services? What does it mean uh, for our community at large? Um, you know, how big is the scale of death uh, in our community? This is an awful thing to, to, to hear, really. Another concern is, is clinical trials. Uh, clinical trials... Um, maybe slow down. Uh, again, social distancing is playing a part uh, in, in this particular issue. We are hearing from the biopharmaceutical industry, that's not the case yet, but there are concerns. Um, other issues, telemedicine, and um, that is a positive uh, development. There's still quite a lot of skepticism around it, but there is no doubt that it has been used very successfully during COVID-19. It may be here to stay. There may be things that we can do to, to improve it. Um, and also the uh, deployment of a tele-support, so where people have been able to do online activities, or reminiscence therapy, uh, memory cafes online rather than in person. Yes, it's true that not everyone has access to these activities, but where these have been uh, done, they've been proven to be quite successful. So uh, why not think that in the future this could be a much more um, convenient, simple way uh, for people to get together. So th there are some positives, there are some negatives. A lot of people think, rightly so, that face-to-face -face contact is, uh, is, is just equally as important. So um, there is quite a lot that we still have to study, uh, but we can see that there are going to be changes and some of them may be there to stay. Our overarching worry at ADI is that government will use um, uh, COVID-19 is an excuse not to do things about dementia. I think that's been abundantly clear what we've said earlier. And so in our, from our point of view, we will make sure that this um, example of COVID-19 um, is going to be used to highlight to government just how much the rights of our constituency have been trampled. We have been hearing that in triage, uh, people living with dementia have been deprioritized um, despite not having other conditions uh, for treatment. So this is obviously discrimination uh, and that uh, breaks the human rights of senior citizens. So we will make sure that the lessons that we have learned during this period are going to be brought to government and governments are going to feel even more strongly 
the need to implement uh, plans that take into consideration people living with dementia and their families.